I'm Jose Talavera, a solutions architect at uh, WeWorks. And uh, because I work for WeWorks, uh, I'll try to be as quiet as possible during this talk. Now, with me, and a lot more important is uh, Miguel Fontanilla. And I have been working uh, with him for quite some time now on Kubernetes best practices and on the Spanish uh, community as well. Miguel has been dealing with uh, GitHub um, extensively and uh, managed to apply his knowledge in multiple companies that he's worked for. So in the next few minutes, uh, we'll be talking about a selection of uh, GitHub tools, open source, most of them, um, explaining their pros and cons. And um, with that, we will do a comparison of those tools um, around multiple areas like scalability, simplicity, degree of automation. And last but not least, uh, we will go over Sender, which is Miguel's company, uh, more detailed implementation of GitOps uh, and how they combine as well um, some of those tools, right? Um, and without further ado, over to you, Miguel. Okay, thank you, Jose. Thank you for, for the introduction and thank you for presenting the topic. So um, I'm going to just go forward and we're going to start talking about our GitOps tools. And uh, with regards to the tools, it's important to point out that also, uh, all the tools that we will review in this presentation uh, do support uh, Kubernetes, uh, raw manifest and, and several templated languages. Uh, this uh, presentation is going to focus mostly on, on the usage of Helm uh, with these tools, alongside these tools. So that's something we, we're going to have to take into account. And, uh, you know, the main idea here is, um, sorry, yeah, it's, uh, we're going to be uh, comparing three main tools here. There, of course, there are more tools, but we're going to be talking about Argo CD, Flux, and Helm file. Um, and, you know, offering some of the... Uh, stronger points of each tool and comparing them. So let's get started with, uh, with Argo, uh, Argo CD. As you may already know, uh, well, Argo, it's uh, deployed in Kubernetes within the cluster. Uh, as uh, you know, it has several components that make up the, the application and uh, it fosters the centralized deployment management of, of releases when using Helm. Even though you can deploy several Argo servers, you can control multiple clusters from, from the same server. Uh, it does offer its own API server, a graphic interface, pretty useful one, and a CLI. Uh, yeah, and it also uh, supports multiple templating languages as well as multiple plugins to extend the functionality. Uh, from the GitOps perspective, it does support synchronization, automatic synchronization, drift detection, and even live diffs uh, to check what is happening or, or what has changed. And uh, there's a, something which is really interesting, which is that it supports declarative definition of apps via custom resource definitions. So you can also create releases and interact with Argo by talking to the Kubernetes uh, extensions API. So that's, uh, that's um, let's say, I would say, uh, a brief summary of the, of the benefits of Argo. Uh, here you can check, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, there's a lot of people that has already been using it. You can see the, the graphic interface, which in my opinion is one of the best uh, points of Argo, especially for, for those developers that want to uh, check exactly what's happening on the cluster when a synchronization operation is happening and so on. So uh, pretty, pretty useful. Um, then, of course, uh, moving over to the next tool, we would have FluxCD from WeWorks. Um, uh, you know, uh, we learned yesterday that they uh, already have some um, implementations for uh, for graphic interface going on. Pretty interested on that. And yeah, again, yeah, this one is also uh, operator and CRD based. There's a set of, of cluster components that you need to install. Uh, yeah, it supports declarative release definition when using Helm 2. Uh, in and it uh, watches changes on different repositories and it also offers a lot of integrations to trigger deployments based on different events. Uh, I'm just commenting here the image changes, image repository watching, which is one of the, uh, the most useful things for me. And uh, apart from that, you know, uh, it offers a CLI uh, to control it, um, support synchronization, automatic synchronization, self-healing and drift detection. And uh, in this case, it's a little bit more distributed, a uh, more distributed paradigm that Ar than Argo CD. But again, you can have multi-tenancy also when using Flux CD. 
And uh, you know, starting on V2, it's uh, powered by the KDOPS toolkit, which is a set of utilities, uh, operators, and, and pieces of software that make up Argo, uh, sorry, make up Flux, and let you integrate it with a lot of different uh, other pieces. But you can also extend its functionalities by extending the, the GitOps toolkit. So it's a pretty amazing initiative. Um, so uh, regarding the functionalities offered by Flux, I just wanted to showcase here, just in case you didn't know about it. For example, this uh, auto commit based on an image trigger. So basically, Flux has detected a change on an image repo and has committed a change so that the, the chart code is up to date with, uh, with the new image. And uh, with this, we will move to the third tool I want to comment today, which is uh, Helm file which is a way simpler tool in comparison with the two previous tools, but uh, yet can be really powerful. It's distributed as a CLI, a pretty simple one, and uh, it does support uh, custom, both Customize and Helm. And uh, you, know, you can uh, define in a declarative way your charts, your repos, and your environments. So it allows for a lot of uh, customization, and you can use Go templating for uh, templating your value files, overriding them, uh, templating your releases, your environments. So it's pretty, pretty flexible. You can, you can reach uh, virtually any configuration you may need with this tool. And by means of uh, external plugins, you can get a Terraform-like diff, which is uh, especially useful when uh, doing bulk upgrades in several clusters across several environments. And it does support the sync operation. However, it is not relying on cluster uh, side components. So uh, you may need to implement a periodic sync in case you want to you wanna have it like that. And uh, here you, you can see the... Um, in this case, a pretty simple example of this diff-like behavior uh, triggered by a change in the code. Uh, you can see it has detected a change. And as I said, it's pretty, pretty useful specifically for those bulk upgrades of cluster components. And well, that's, that's uh, a pretty brief uh, introduction to, to each of the tools here. And now let's go to the to the comparison itself, right? Um, just uh, for you to know, this comparison is based on an article Jose and I uh, have been working for. So there are some more tools in the in the comparison, uh, but just for the sake of time, we didn't include them here. Um, so uh, basically, uh, well, uh, when when it comes to the to selecting the right tool, uh, there's more than one right answer to the question of what is the right GitOps tool for me, right? It will strongly depend on each uh, use case, number of clusters, number of environments, maturity of the teams, uh, you know, uh, the need of observability, etc. So in order to provide a structured comparison of the tools, here we are considering uh, seven aspects. And as you can see, there's an, a fourth tool worth that we haven't included in the, in the comparison. Feel free to check it out because it's also a really uh, powerful tool. And yeah, we're just gonna comment some of the some of the aspects. Uh, for example, when it comes to observability, you can see here that Argo is, uh, even though there are already some graphic interfaces for Flux, as I commented before, uh, Argo is leading this category because uh, it's, it's a pretty graphic and intuitive tool in that sense. Uh, when it comes then, for example, to simplicity, here, uh, definitely Helm File is, is winning the race. Uh, because it's just a simple CLI. But on the other hand, if we compare it on the automation side of things, uh, Helm file is not as you know as automated as uh, Argo CD or Flux CD could be. They are basically relying on CRDs and operators, so they are way more complex. But also from the point of view of, of automation, they react to changes, integrations, and so on in a more uh, complex way and giving you more uh, the, the ability to delegate it to the tool. Uh, yeah, when it comes to uh, secrets encryption, for example, uh, even though you see low scores for uh, Flux, Argo, and Helm file, it doesn't mean that it's not supported, but it's not natively coming with the tool. You can incorporate it via external plugins and so on, so you can you can make it work. For example, with a uh, with a uh, seal secret for Flux or uh, or the Helm secret plugin for Helm file. And well, when it comes to flexibility. All of these three tools are really flexible, uh, especially especially Argo and Flux, because you can interact with them as using Kubernetes API, their own APIs, their CLIs. You can automate quite a lot of things, and um, same goes for Helm file. You can customize almost everything to to make it suit your needs. 
And uh, finally, I would say uh, when it comes uh, to CI, uh, probably Flux CD is the tool that you want to have integrated with UCI since based on the GitOps toolkit, you can, uh, you know, do even chat ops based on all the integrations and extensibility. So uh, yeah, that, that would be the comparison. Miguel, what do you think there? I think it's, you know, very interesting uh, comparison um, and, you know, there's probably a lot of work behind this, but, um, you know, why, why, why did you choose those areas, right? Scalability, simplicity, automation. Why, why did you choose those ones and not some others? Yeah, well, basically the idea here was to, to find uh, a set of parameters that you could relate to when planning the CD strategy for your specific use case. Of course, you could have some others, but uh, we believe these ones were the one that you could easily relate to your use case. Like, how fast is this thing going to scale? How am I, I mean, how badly do I need secret encryption? How uh, automated do I need my pipelines to be? Or So they, these were basically kind of a consensus on what do you need to assess when planning to create a new CD or a new way of implementing CD? Yeah, I think that that's definitely, you know, pretty interesting for those companies that are trying to, to pick one of the um, GitOps tools, right? And they don't know really how to assess them, how to evaluate, right? Um, so I think that that's a good uh, a good way of doing it. And also, if any company is trying to maybe thinking about combining them, right? Because there is no such a tool that covers everything that they need. Maybe they need to they are forced to to combine some of those tools. So I think that's a good segue for for the the next slide. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So good anticipation on that. Um, yeah, so let, let, let's keep in mind, as, as Jose commented, that there might be more than one tool that suits your use case, or, or maybe depending on the, the, na the nature of your application or software component that is to be deployed, yeah, one tool can be a better choice. You, you might even have cases where you want to have different life cycles for components in the same cluster. So uh, for this topic, I, I will focus on a work stream we are currently uh, working on, Sender, on, on my company. Uh, so I would like to, to give you a short introduction about the issues we face and, and where we were coming from uh, so that you can understand why we are now thinking in this way. So Sender as a company uh, has suffered a exponential growth in the past year or in the past year and a half. And, uh, you know, the Kubernetes setup and the cloud setup we, we had was not scaling as fast and was not, you know, being updated as fast as the business was uh, growing and creating. So some decisions were, were made, some, uh, let's say, patches were added so that we could keep business continuity. So uh, when we arrived, uh, the new team, we inherited a heterogeneous complex setup uh, as a consequence of, of this rapid growth. And with several ways of deploying software to Kubernetes, pipelines, Python libraries running on pipelines, raw um, manifests, uh, Helm charts, Helm charts from pipelines, a lot of things. And as a consequence, we would have cluster components, understanding them as add-ons, for example, and application releases all mixed, entangled, and coupled. Plus, lack of clear ownership on the on the resources that were running um, within the cluster due to this coupling, and uh, yeah, basically uh, we could not reproduce or bootstrap uh, new clusters with these components, uh, let's say, on demand in a fast, repeatable, scalable way. So, long story short, we needed to redefine how Kubernetes was done at Sender, and that's when we decided to give a look to the GitOps tools. And first, we start introducing Helm file uh, so that we could manage uh, Helm releases for the add-ons, such as cluster autoscaler, uh, you know, monitoring agents, and so on across the different environments. And then we ask ourselves, okay, how do we provide something more, a ready-to-use product for our customers, our developers? And, and that's what we are working right now on. That's what, what we call the product focus approach. And uh, let me tell you a little bit more about it. So the idea here is, um, yeah, we want to maximize the product we offer to our uh, developers. So the idea is uh, to, uh, you know, to hunt them uh, ready to use cluster with all the add-ons and all the, the common components they might need. Um, yeah, and also to reach responsibility and lifecycle segregation between uh, the infra side and the upside. So the infra part would contain also all these add-ons, you know, and all these uh, extra components. 
Um, so apart from that, we would also like to give some flexibility for the tool uh, of choice uh, for, for deployments on the, on the, let's say, customer side. And uh, we have the premise that everything should be managed by Helm in the end. And, and we will explain later a little bit more on that. Without quick, quick thing, um, Jan. Um, so did you have any specific challenges or issues kind of to kick off this, this project, this kind of evolution to GitOps? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, one of the main challenges here has been understanding this product, the product itself that, that the development teams are going to be expecting. Uh, that this close uh, product that they're going to be receiving and starting to deploy to. So understanding what they might need, what common components all the teams are going to need, what components are not common or shared across the team. So that was one of the things. And we also needed to ensure that the provisioning model was scalable, repeatable, and the developer journey was suitable for both skill and less skill um, uh, users. That, that's uh, the idea. So with these premises and also with these challenges, we ended up uh, implementing the following approach, uh, this uh, product uh, focus approach. And let me tell you a little bit about it. So. Uh, here you can see three levels. Uh, let's say that the, the lower level is the infrastructure level. In our case, we are bootstrapping it with Terraform, which basically correlates to the cluster uh, resources, nodes, etc., and all the, the EKS part because we run on AWS, which is bootstrapped with Terraform. And on top of that, we would have all these add-ons that are uh, provisioned using Helm file. And this is what we call uh, the platform responsibility. We as a platform team bootstrap the cluster and uh, add all these uh, pieces, all these add-ons using Helm file. And that's the, let's say the product ready to use that we uh, hand over to the developers. And uh, there are several benefits of using this approach. Uh, I mean, it's more scalable as we can replicate Terraform with a dry approach. And on top of that with Helm file, we can have as many environments as we have, as we want, sorry. And in the case we need to upgrade something across the entire organization, we can just change it with Helm file, let pipelines run, and that's it. So we have a more infra-like control of the um, releases related to the node components or to the, yeah, as you know, the add-ons. And then on top of that, we, we, we have what we call the user space, let's say, or, or the, yeah, the developer space, which is managed by the teams where they deploy their applications using Helm and using uh, GitOps tools. That's the idea. So here we have to clear uh, let's say worlds, a segregation between responsibility and life cycles. So, Miguel, so in there, um, you know, obviously the most interesting part is the, the upper layer there where you have Helm plus Argo or Flux. Um, what, what does that mean? Does that mean that they need, they have two options or they need to, they can pick both or, you, you know, how is the selection being done? Yo, here, here uh, actually, this is a more generic, uh, you know, uh, schema, let's say. Uh, what, what, uh, the idea here is to, you know, to show that you can implement uh, the, the upper part of this model with uh, the tool that suits you uh, in the best way. Uh, I mean, in our company, we have some more experience with Argo and some developers were already using Argo CD. That's what we are. We are actually working with Argo CD. But again, that's, that's depending on the company. In our case, we are not that big. So for, I, I believe for our scenario, it's better to just choose one, uh, one tool because we can share common knowledge across the whole company so that they, they can get started with this new way of doing things. But of course, if you have a super big company and you, and you want to offer several choices, you can also do it. Uh, I mean, in the end, there are two different domains because you're managing, let's say, the core part with your Helm file, and then the tool you want to use on top of it is it could be, uh, you know, based on the on the team selection choice or, or the preferences. That uh, the idea is to keep it as flexible as possible. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. So thanks. Um, I want to thank Miguel for you know coming, joining us, and and presenting this uh, this use case and this comparison of uh, multiple. GitOps tools. Um, thank you very much, Miguel. Thanks for, for your time and uh, thanks for sharing this this, uh, this work. And uh, back to you, uh, Damani.